You know, I'm often asked, where do you get your keen fashion sense from? Could it be from Dr. Forrester from Mystery Science Theater 3000 fame? Or maybe it's from this week's inductee into the Mad Genius Hall of Fame. <laughs> Greetings, people of the internet. I'm Scott with CircWorks Art Labs. Welcome to the Underground Laboratory, where from time to time we pay tribute to the evil geniuses, supervillains, and mad scientists that help inspire us to achieve greatness. And today, as somebody who really inspired me, it's Beekman from Beekman's World. Eh, maybe I'm just a sucker for guys with green lab coats. Anyway, we are going to do commission of Beekman and induct him into the Hall of Fame, the Mad Genius Hall of Fame. So, without any further delay, let's get to it. Today we induct Beekman into the Mad Genius Hall of Fame. Now this is one of my personal favorites because Beekman's world was a huge influence on Cirqueworks Art Labs. And not to mention I happen to be a pretty big Star Wars fan. And interestingly enough, Beekman has some deep-rooted ties to Star Wars. But we'll get into that in a bit. As usual, we're going to drop a few facts about our inductee and also talk about some of the art supplies and techniques that we use to create this portrait. For this and every portrait in the series, I'm using 8x10 Kona Classic Artist Paper. Classic is basically the company's designation of the color tan. So if, you, if it says Kona Classic, it basically just means means it's a tan color because they also make uh, some other colors or maybe just one other color. I know they make a, I know they make a gray, um, but I prefer the classic color. And Kona brand paper is unique because it's made from recycled coffee bean bag fibers, which is is pretty cool. I and uh, you know, but you know, I just like it basically for the the look and feel that it has. Anytime I approach a drawing, I do some gesture drawings and some sketches and for this I'm using uh, Prismacolor Coal Erase Erasable Pencil. Um, I like the fact that it does erase and um, lately I've been doing most of my sketching with these pencils. I used to use a, a drafting lead holder and Prismacolor non-photo blue drawing leads but more and more I'm liking the feel of these Colorase pencils. They've got a little bit of a waxiness to them, which the, the lead holder leads that I use had that as well. Um, but these, these you can get in different, you know, a, a bigger variety of colors. And I just kind of switch back and forth. Of course, I'm using, using red here. But what I like about them is they don't really smudge like the, the graphite pencils do. And you can, you can, get, you can even get like a, a black color so it, if you like that traditional look. Um, but I like to mix it up with different colors. But for these, most of these, I am using just a red pencil. It seems to, seems to show up enough on the Kona paper, the class, that classic color, but also, uh, you know, also kind of fades away when I start coloring and everything like that. As I mentioned, Cirqueworks Art Labs was influenced quite a bit by the show Beekman's World. Uh, you may have noticed the green lab coat that I was kind of referring to in the beginning. And that is sort of an homage to Beekman's World, as well as Dr. Forrester from Mystery Science Theater 3000. Um, I really like both of those shows. Um, and not just because of the lab coat, because of the, the set designs. Um, Beekman's World really had a, a really awesome set design. And that's, that was sort of influenced the look of the underground lair. Um, and I, I draw inspirations from a lot of different shows like that. Um, uh, among them, like Pee Wee's Playhouse, of course, Willy Wonka, and not... I, both, you know, I guess both the movies kind of, but also just if you've ever seen the Willy Wonka, like the actual candy company, some of their displays and things, they really have that fun kind of wacky, you know, aesthetic to them. And as I said, the the set design from MST3K, oh, it's awesome. Especially if you guys have seen like the new episodes, they, they kind of captured that same thing, but they brought back and added some new elements to it and everything you should you should definitely check that out on netflix if you haven't and there's another inspiration i have it was sort of a short-lived show so not too many people know about it but the weird al show and if he also kind of lived in this underground lair type thing and uh 
I think you might be able to find uh, find episodes of that on on uh, YouTube if you if you do a search for that. Just search the Weird Al show. I think I, at one point they were out. There were some episodes out there, and you'll you'll definitely see what I mean. Um, but Beekman's World is definitely on the top of that list, and I still and I'm still drawing influences from these shows. In the future, I, I really want to expand the layer and include some more inventions and contraptions that have that quirky, you know, whimsical sci-fi aesthetic to them. I also really like that fast-paced MTV style editing that the show had and I want to I want to implement more of that into my channel. I'd like to get to a point where, you know, is when the channel continues to grow and I can afford to you know, dedicate a little more time to it. I would like a little more of that kind of fast-paced editing because I really do like that style. And I think it definitely works really well for YouTube with sort of the attention span of a lot of people that watch YouTube. So, but anyway, we're getting ahead of ourselves. So let's talk a little bit about Beekman, the character, you know, where it all began. Beekman is an eccentric scientist portrayed by actor Paul Zaloom and is based on the syndicated comic strip, You Can with Beekman and Jax. Uh, created by cartoonist Jock Church. The idea for creating a question and answer style comic strip based on real questions from real kids came to church when he was working for Lucasfilm, answering George Lucas's fan mail. And originally, the concept was to have a comic strip and a television series starring C-3PO and R2-D2, and C-3PO would teach kids foreign languages and R2 would cover topics relating to the world around them. Um, I'm not really sure how that worked. R I mean, R2 doesn't really talk, so I imagine C-3PO would probably kind of narrate for R2 or translate for him and everything. Um, but anyway, yeah, that was the concept behind it. And unfortunately, it never really came to be, but uh, Church would later rework some of his ideas into a comic strip starring Beekman and his sister Jax, who would answer real science questions from kids. And the comic strip was a single panel text-based strip that included cartoon versions of Beekman and Jax, as well as charts and graphs and other visual aids to help answer the question of the day. Now, the comic strip version of Beekman was a bit different from the one you see on TV. In the comic, he still had that trademark kind of wild light socket hairdo, uh, but it was bright blue. And absent from the comic was that iconic green lab coat. And in its place was sort of a white, you know, white button up t shirt, not t shirt, but you know, just a button up shirt with a necktie and a pocket protector filled with, with pins and other, you know, <laughs> instruments like that. Uh, and in the comic, uh, Beekman wore glasses. And there were also some other differences to his personality. In the comics, Beekman wasn't really a scientist, but rather a science enthusiast. And he would sort of just learn how things work by researching each question and discovering the answer. And this was sort of a representation of creator Jock Church and how he approached the strips. Um, in the television series, Beekman already had a lot of knowledge of most of the topics presented, so he was he was kind of presented as more of an actual, you know, scientist. Now, I want to quickly turn our attention back to the drawing. I'm just kind of putting the finishing touches on the coloring stage. And for that, I'm using a number of different alcohol-based markers, Copic markers. I also use Spectrum Noir and Pantone Trio markers. And I do that, I, I do the coloring first. It's kind of a, a, a weird way that I approach it. Um, but I do the coloring before I do what I'm sort of doing now, which is adding the inking stage. Now, a lot of times, you would ink things first and then add the color, but just for these particular sketches in this series, uh, I'm kind of doing it a little reverse. I like to kind of see how the drawing takes shape, and you can you can see that a little better when you kind of do things a little bit out of order, uh, and it helps to so uh, everything won't smudge and things like that. So. Anyway, so yeah, so right now I am using a Deleter Black number no. 5 ink. Uh, I'm just using a Cotman watercolor brush. And then after I'm done with all that, I'll go in and I'll, I'll add some highlights with a Prismacolor uh, white pencil and also a white uh, Sino gel pen, which is, that really helps pop everything out. And I'll kind of go through and outline it. But you'll see, you'll see that coming out. Uh, but we'll talk, uh, we'll kind of go back to uh, the story of Beekman. 
Beekman's World ran for four seasons from 1992 to 1989 for a total of 91 episodes. Each show featured the titular character who was assisted by his lab rat, Lester. In the pilot, Lester was a puppet, and I'm not, I'm not sure I've actually seen that episode. I might have to track that down, but in every episode since then, uh, he was sort of this dim-witted, uncouth, schlubby guy in a rat costume, uh, and he was played by uh, actor and puppeteer Mark Ritz, who sadly passed away in... 2009 at the age of 63. Um, Beekman was also aided by a changing cast of uh, three female lab assistants named Josie, Liza, and Phoebe, respectively. And uh, Beekman's sister, Jax, never made an appearance, but his mom, who was referred to as Beek Mom, did show up, and she was portrayed by Jean Stapleton, who television fans would probably recognize from her role as Edith Bunker in All in the Family. Beekman's world tackled a number of different scientific topics in which Beekman and his friends would perform different experiments and demonstrations uh, as an answer to real questions sent in by kids, much like the comic strip. Uh, when the experiment was successful, Beekman would often shout out, Zaloom! And that was an obvious reference to the actor who played Beekman's last name. Um, Beekman's world premiered a year prior to another popular kids themed science show Bill Nye the Science Guy and I like Bill Nye a lot um, but I always gravitated more towards Beekman's world because of the elaborate colorful sets and props and you know it was a bit bit zanier and, and fun and I really I really did uh, appreciate that. Um, Beekman's world was pretty popular it could be seen in almost 90 countries around the world and even after the show wrapped up, you could find it in reruns and in syndication. And I believe, I think all of the episodes are available on Netflix. At least they, they were um, a little while ago. So hopefully those are still up there. So if you look at the drawing, the, little, the penguins that I'm drawing right now, those were two, uh, two puppets that opened and closed the show. And they would also pop up before and after the commercial breaks. Um, and their names were Don and Herb. And they were named after Don Herbert, who portrayed Mr. Wizard in Watch Mr. Wizard and Mr. Wizard's World. And he, Mr. Wizard was sort of the original kids' science host. I mean, he had a number of different programs that sort of spanned all the way from the 1950s to the early 90s. So, uh, again, you know, check some of that stuff out because it, it's, it's really cool. And you can kind of see where the inspiration from this came. And it just keeps going into, like, kind of what I'm trying to do. So, um, of course, I'm doing more artwork. But I, I would like to infuse a little bit of a science into the art. And hopefully that'll, that'll start happening, uh, you know, soon. That's, that's kind of on my to-do list. Um, but as far as the penguins go, uh, like I said, they were puppets, and uh, the late Mark Ritz, who played Lester, was also one of the puppeteers, and he kind of came from a long line, well, I don't know if it was a long line, but uh, I just, just to say that his parents uh, were both puppeteers, so he kind of picked that up from them, I think. So I don't know if he, if he actually did the puppeteering for, for Lester in the pilot, too. I'm not sure about that fact, but it stands to reason that he may have, but I can't, I can't say that for certain. So where is Beekman now? Well, as I mentioned, I believe it is on Netflix, and I'm pretty sure it's had a DVD release. I'm not sure if it's available on Blu-ray or not. There have been, uh, the comic strips have been published in book form, so you can probably track those down. And actor Paul Zaloom continues to make appearances as Beekman, from time to time at sort of special events all around the globe and he was also recently made a guest appearance on the popular YouTube channel Captain Disillusion and if you haven't seen that show that's a really cool um, YouTube channel where Captain Disillusion sort of debunks videos and falsehoods by pointing out how the special effects were performed or whatever so that's something you might want to check out and if you if you go to that channel and hopefully if I can remember I will leave a link to it so you can check it out but there is an episode with Beekman and Beekman was sort of and again we're talking about how you know Mr. Wizard to Beekman and on um, so Beekman sort of inspired this Captain Disillusion to do what he does so it's just a never-ending cycle of, of great you know 
the mad scientists teaching moments on television or, or now YouTube or whatever. So, and hopefully that will kind of continue because it's, you know, I, I just find science and learning about science. I mean, I'm kind of, I, I learn along with the show because I'm not an expert on all things science, but it's always fun to learn. So I love watching these kind of shows. And so, yeah, now I am just finalizing the drawing. Like I said, I'm getting my Sino gel pen and I'm kind of popping out that outline. And we're just going to wrap this thing up. And thanks again for joining me for another episode of Mad Genius Hall of Fame. If you guys have people you would like to induct, be sure to let me know in the comments section. And uh, yeah, so we've been getting some good ones, and I, I get I get new ones. I've got a big list going, so a lot of times people tell me one, and I'm like, oh yeah, I got that on the list. But I have been getting some new ones too, so feel free to let me know. It's always good to kind of expand that list. But I've got I've got quite a bit to keep me going. So hopefully you guys enjoy this series, and we'll keep it going. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I give you. Beekman, as we induct Beekman, yes, into the Mad Genius Hall of Fame. Now, if you guys have somebody that you'd like to suggest that we induct into the Hall of Fame, let us know in the comments section. Tell us who you think should be in here and why. And, uh, yeah, until next week, I'll see you guys later. That is all. Hey everyone, thanks for joining me here in the Art Lab. There's a lot of other great content on the channel, so click that subscribe button and you won't miss a thing. If you're an aspiring evil genius, visit surfworks.com for all your mad science supply needs. And if you want to contact me, hit me up in the comments section or follow me on social media. I'm looking forward to it. I'll see you then.